Welcome to this week's update on the Hedged Option Portfolio. In this update, as well as looking at the accounts, I'm going to show you a very useful option analytics website called Amber Data Derivatives. They have just made all of their analytics charts completely free, and as this includes all the Deribit option data, it is very useful for trading options on Deribit. So I'll do a walk around some of the most useful charts, and there will be a link in the video description. Since my last update, Bitcoin has chopped around quite a bit, with price reaching as high as 95k and as low as 76k. In the main account, I'm still rolling most of the shorter data positions out in time as they expire, collecting credits and where possible rolling the strike of any in the money options closer to the money. As I mentioned in the last video, the recovery from the big drop will likely take a few weeks minimum, but this is going nicely with the equity back at about 0.275 Bitcoin. In this account, I've got plenty of spare positive deltas currently sitting at 0.14, with the theta close to zero currently sitting at minus two. And I'm not holding any short calls at the moment in the short term. So I'm just going to sell a call right now. And I'm going to sell a Sunday call, and I'm going to sell the 85k here. There we go, just sold the 85k call on the 16th of March expiry for 55 basis points. And that's lowered my delta slightly and also made the theta positive. I'll leave it at that for now, but I might sell another call later today if the price rallies a bit. Someone left a comment on the previous video asking to see a delta hedged long position. The other account, as you might remember, is a delta hedged account where I use the Greeks Live delta hedging tool to hedge any deltas in the account. And so far I've only ever been short options in there and then use the tool to hedge the deltas from that. But now I've entered into a long strangle position there. I'm in the delta hedged account now, and you can see I've got a long strangle on the 16th of March expiry. And this is being hedged by the Greeks Live delta hedging tool, the same as the positions in the previous videos. I'll just show that tool as a reminder. And this tool works exactly the same whether you're long or short options. It checks the delta of the account regularly, and when the delta breaches the set threshold that I've done here in these forms, it makes trades to hedge that delta. And you can see the most recent trades down at the bottom of the page here. When you're delta hedging an option position, your eventual profit or loss is heavily dependent on whether the implied volatility you traded the option at is higher or lower than the eventual realized volatility while you're holding the position. This comparison of implied to realized vol brings me neatly onto the Amber Data platform because one of the charts they have displays the relationship between implied volatility and realized volatility very nicely. And I'm talking about this chart right here. The x-axis is time, of course, but it's also displaying the current implied volatility in green on top here. And then the solid blue line is this implied volatility shifted by the number of days up here. And what this allows it to calculate is the volatility risk premium that was actually realized over that time period. So we've got the VRP, which stands for Volatility Risk Premium or Variance Risk Premium. And what that essentially shows is how much higher or lower the implied volatility is than the realized volatility. And it shows this for both the projected, which just takes the current implied volatility versus the current realized volatility. But of course, those time periods don't really match because the current implied volatility, and we're looking at seven days uh, volatility here, so the implied volatility right now for seven days is the market's view on volatility for the next seven days. But the seven day realized today is the previous seven days. So while they are related, they're looking at two different time periods. So in addition to that, we also have the VRP realized in blue here. And what that's doing is shifting the implied volatility from a week ago up to today. So today we can see the realized volatility for the last week. And what it's doing with the blue data here is showing us what the implied volatility was a week ago. So we're looking at what the implied volatility was a week ago and then comparing that to what volatility realized over that period. And it's showing both of these historically as well. On both of these bottom parts of the chart, when they are above zero, it means that the implied volatility was higher than the realized volatility. And when it's below zero, it means the implied volatility is lower than the realized volatility. So what this relates to in terms of the profitability of trading options is if you're selling options and then delta hedging them, you want the implied volatility to be higher than the realized volatility. because That means you're 
collecting a larger premium, but then the price doesn't end up moving that much, so your hedges don't cost you very much. So if you're selling options, you want both of these bottom parts of the chart to be above zero. And conversely, obviously, if you're buying options and then delta hedging them, or just buying them, but particularly if you're delta hedging them, you want both of these bottom parts of the chart to be below zero, because that implies that the realized volatility is higher than the implied, which if you've bought options means you've bought them cheaply. You've paid a lower implied volatility when actually the realized volatility was higher. So you can see over the past sort of two weeks-ish, uh, both of these have been well below zero, which means that if you're selling options and delta hedging them, like I was in the other account up until this week, uh, you'll be losing money. Both of these are below zero, so really you'd want to be long options during that period. There's no way to be certain of what that would have been ahead of time, but we can see, looking back at least, that it would have been much better to be long options during this whole period. For that, for a few weeks though, it was a better time to be selling options. And you can see this going back historically as well. So while it doesn't give you any certainty about the future, it can give you an indication of what type of market you're in. So if you were just selling options systematically, and then you can see the VRP going negative for a sustained period, you might consider that it's just not a good market for systematically selling options at the moment, and maybe ease off a little, or maybe even flip to buying options instead. That's enough on this chart for today. This is probably my favorite chart on this website, but there's there's loads of other ones. We've got box plots of realized volatility here, box plots of implied volatility, the term structure, probability density functions up here. We've got this table tracking uh, risk reversals and butterflies. So there's there's lots to get your teeth stuck into on this website, plenty of charts. These are all the current charts, but if I go up into the menu, you can see they've also got lots of historical stuff, an option scanner, and several other things as well. And it's not just Deribit data, there's several other exchanges, although if you're looking at option data, you might as well just look at Deribit, because Deribit's such a huge percentage of the crypto options market at least. But if you wanted to look at altcoins that Deribit doesn't carry, for example, or futures, there's plenty of other data to get stuck into here. So it's well worth checking this website out. They have lots of data that option traders in particular will find useful, but not just option traders. And the data that's available isn't available, at least not for free in many places. Anyone can create a dashboard that looks at just the current market data by hooking up to the Deribit API, for example. But Amber Data also has a lot of this data historically as well, so it's looking back in time. So you can track these data points over time and see how the current values are sitting within the sort of historical ranges of stuff like the box plots that I just showed. The analytics charts used to be a paid subscription, and Amber Data do still have some additional paid services, I think. But this analytics section has just been made completely free for everyone, which is super useful. So I'm sure a lot of you will get some value out of this. I'll leave it there for today's video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.